about uh, the, uh, the various uh, life cycle models. Then uh, we also saw about the importance of requirement analysis and specification. Okay, and what were the phases? How we are going to do it? Why we are going to do it? What is the relevance and importance? Okay, what kind of document one has to prepare for the client side? So those all those things we have seen yesterday. So now uh, moving towards the next, we are having formal system specification. So from the name itself, formal system specification is a mathematical method uh, where uh, uh, you are specifying the hardware and the software system which is to be used. The specification which is there should be reasonable, it should be realizable, that means you should be able to have those specifications with you, okay, so, uh, while we, uh, you are implementing or developing the system. Because let's say, for example, you want to make a very heavy software, right? So for that, the hardware specification has to be very, very strong. So, uh, so that's why in that situation you have to look at uh, whether the uh, the software platform or the hardware which you need, whether you will be able to get that or not, or there are certain restrictions. Okay, so you have to check that any kind of specification, if you like, whether that specification or that requirement is being able to met or not. Okay, so that is very very important. Okay, so. When suppose we are writing down the requirements, whether it's a hardware or system or a software system, okay, we have to see whether those requirements can be uh, realized or whether they can be brought or not. Okay, so that has to be uh, addressed uh, uh, mathematically, and we have to write each of the specifications very neatly so that we the we are being able to understand, and the person also, the client also is being understand that in which platform or using which hardware configuration the system will be built, and accordingly they also will have to have that uh, configuration in their system. So it is basically a mathematical basis of representation of your requirement. Okay. Then uh, you may have a formal specification language which consists of two sets that is. Uh, Thin and thin. Okay, so whenever you are uh, making any product, so two things you have to make in, you have to keep in mind is the syntax, okay, and the semantics, isn't it? So syntax basically uh, refers to the uh, The, the logical aspect of the system that is being developed is correct. Okay, the concept which we have made on the paper that has to be uh, um, uh, translated into a full credit system. So for that, the logical approach has to be very very clean. It has to be uh, very strongly analyzed so that we are being able to know like what is our input data how the processing will be done and what output we should be getting. Okay, so for that our concept, our logic has to be very clear of how we are approaching the system to be developed, okay, or various modules of the system to be developed. Okay, so those things we have to be very, very clear. So those uh, uh, logical aspects that can be uh, understood more better is by using various kinds of uh, 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 system specification languages like you can use state sequences, you can use state transition diagrams as well, okay, efficient piece you can use, okay, and so on. The next is uh, your satisfaction relation. So once you have realized you know how to code in a particular language, that means you know the syntax, once you know how to, uh, you, are, you are clear about what you are supposed to get that means you know the input how it is will be processed okay and what output you should get so you are clear about the logical aspect of how things will work then you have to check whether it is satisfying all the conditions that you have actually uh, uh, realized or when you have to develop that concept at the initial initial stage whether that will be uh, trans 
translated into a pure uh, 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 working model or not at the end when the system is built. So that satisfaction relation you need to check while the system is being built. So you need to see, okay, during when I had um, built a system, while I was thinking to build a system, I had visualized the system should do this kind of work. Whether it is doing this or not, if it is doing that means syntactically and semantically as well, we have achieved our objective. But if in case we have not uh, achieved or what was thought initially and we have got something else, if it is not working the way we have visualized initially, then the satisfaction relation will be very, very low. So anything which you do, it should be very, the system definitely should be very much uh, uh, satisfying. Okay, so that is very important. Students that you are joining very late. Uh, then the approaches of while developing a system can be of two kinds in nature. One is the model oriented, and the other one is property oriented. Okay, so in model oriented, basically, one defines a system by directly constructing a model of the system. Okay, so that can be in terms of like uh, tuples. Okay, it can be in terms of tables or relations. Okay, it can be maybe a function. Okay, it can be a set theory based. Okay, so something like that. But in case of property oriented style, the software behavior is defined indirectly by stating like what are the features it will have, how many modules it will be there, what kind of functions it will be there. Okay, so keeping that in mind, the uh, the formal method of specifying of a product is basically dependent upon uh, two things, one is the model oriented and the other one is property oriented, okay? These things are not required actually for you. These are for MC actually I have made. Hmm, this is important. So question might be asked from here. Uh, one question you might uh, write down, like what is SRS, Software Requirement Specification? What are the characteristics? Why is it needed? Okay, so that part is mostly asked in the uh, question paper. Now, uh, software design. So now, before, earlier we have seen how the requirement analysis is being done. To this day. So now we will see what is software design basically. So software design basically is a method to transform. Transform means change, isn't it? The user requirement. Who is the user here? The client or the customer into some suitable form which helps the programmer in software coding and implementation. In the design phase, basically, we will be deciding on what programming language we will be using, which server we will be using, okay? Uh, in which platform the software will be operating. So all these considerations will be made in the software design phase. Secondly, uh, it will, we will also be uh, deciding on what kind of data structures we'll be using for storing the input data or maybe for um, out, any kind of output we are um, expecting, okay? So all those considerations will be taken care in the software design phase. Maybe in software design phase, some of them, they write the pseudo codes as well. Okay, so all these things, considerations are being made in software design. But to know about the software design, uh, we need to refer to the analysis phase because there everything about the whole system it was being specified. So what from which document we will be able to know? Uh, it will be basically from SRS, that is from the software requirement specification. In an SRS, basically, we will come to know what is the expectation of the client, what kind of system we are going to develop, what are the information that we have received, what kind of input data the system will be taking in, what kind of output the system will be generating. So all this information will be documented and stored in SRS, what kind of functions it will be there. Okay, so taking that information, we will be moving into the software uh, design phase, which is uh, which needs to be more specific and detailed in terms of uh, requirement of the software. Okay, now this output of the software design will be in the next phase. That means we need to implement now. We need to make the software now 
uh, that we need to construct it. Okay, so all these considerations what we have made in the software design. Now in the next phase, that is in the implementation phase, we need to implement it, and we have to develop the software uh, using high-level programming language. So software design consists of uh, three things: architectural design, high-level design, and detailed design. So architectural design is the highest abstract version of the system. It's just a model of a system which is being prepared. By the interior details are not uh, expressed, like how the system will be built, but how the system will look like, what work it will do. Only that is being specified in the architect architectural design. It will only tell about how many cars it will be there in the software. So those things will be there in the architectural design. Okay. In the high level design, the high level design, once we have finished the architectural design, we move to the high level design. So here it basically breaks up the single and the multiple components. So maybe we have a very large kind of system we have to develop. So we need to decompose them into smaller subsystems and modules. And we need to check how these modules or smaller parts of the system will be interacting with one another. So in high level design, it focuses how a big system is decomposed into smaller components and how these smaller components are interrelated with one another and how they are uh, connected with one another. Okay, so in high level design basically recognizes the module structure. Module structure means the various parts, okay, of the system, okay, and the relation and interaction among one another. In the detailed design, it deals with the implementation part of what is seen as a system, as it's a subsystem in the previous two designs. So in the detailed design, basically, we will categorize like these are the various subsystems, what kind of inputs every subsystem will be taking, what output every subsystem or part will be giving us. Okay, so this is in a more detailed uh, way. Okay, what are the things we need, what are the things we will not need, okay, what kind of data structures we'll be using what kind of algorithms we will be using. So all these things will be coming in the detailed design, okay? Then next is uh, modularization. So modularization is a method of dividing a big software into multiple small, small subsystems, okay? Into multiple small, small subsystems which are capable to carry out tasks independently. Okay, these modules may work as a basic construct for the entire software. So modularization, what is it trying to say is, um, it basically decomposes uh, the software system. And each, and each of the part will be doing uh, uh, some of the work independently. Okay, so these modules will work as the basic constructs. Okay, and uh, module here basically means the same thing only. We are dividing a big system into smaller, smaller parts, and each of the small part first is conquered, divide and conquer. That means we are dividing a big system into smaller parts, and each small part is developed first. Okay, one by one then ultimately the whole system is basically developed, okay? Now, what are the advantages of modularization? Uh, smaller parts, when it is, uh, we are to uh, like develop, okay? They are much more easier to maintain and develop, okay? So let's say one system is there, like an e-commerce, let's say. There may be various things like registration process, there may be payment process, isn't it? There will be billing process, there will be order related process, so many things will be there. But that system, that e-commerce system has to be decomposed into smaller subsections and each of the subsections has to be developed and it becomes easier also to maintain them because phase-wise it will be working. Then program is divided based on the functional aspects, like what work it will do, based on the kind of work it will do, based on the difference of work that uh, each of the components will be doing. So based on that, the system is decomposed or divided. Then design level of abstraction can be brought into the program. So whenever we are decomposing uh, the 
system or the software to be developed, then we need not go to the detail level, uh, I, I mean to say, of how things are being done, okay, of the entire system. At individual level, when the system is being decomposed, then part-wise we can uh, um, uh, show as a model or as a prototype of what work the subsystems will be doing. Components with high cohesion can be reused again. So certain parts which has similarities, okay, uh, uh, sorry, certain subparts of the system, if they have some similarities, then those similar features can be added up, okay. Concurrent execution can be made possible. So it's not that only one subsystem will be working at the same time. There may be, let's say, one system has been broken down into five parts. So it may so happen that five parts also can be working simultaneously in parallel, but without any kind of overlapping, okay. Then design from uh, security aspect. So uh, we also in the modular uh, division when this thing takes place, we also have to see that uh, the security aspect is also handled quite very well. Okay. Okay, so let us see uh, what is uh, concurrency in the design phase. So all systems actually are meant to be executed sequentially, isn't it? By SQL execution, we mean that the uh, instruction or the system will be uh, working, uh, I mean to say will be executed one by one only. That means when one part of the system executes, then only the next part of the system will be executing, okay? So uh, let's say, for example, if a software has got five modules, okay, so it generally earlier times in like long uh, ago, it was expected that the first module or the first part when it is executed, then the second part will be uh, working and then it will be executed. Then once that finishes, then the third one. So it was a kind of a sequential execution. Okay, but generally it is uh, seen that uh, concurrent execution of the subsystems is much more preferred because that way the parallel processing and the output is much more higher. So in software design, concurrency is basically implemented by decomposing the software into multiple independent units of execution, okay, like modules and executing them in parallel. And in, uh, in other words, con concurrency, it helps us uh, uh, for the software to uh, achieve our objective in a much more efficient manner. Okay, so that is one of the most preferred feature in software design. That means you need to have a software to perform multiple works at the same period of time so that the output and the efficiency of the system is achieved in a greater way. Okay, so uh, these things, coupling and cohesion, I will uh, talk about maybe in the next class. Tomorrow I'll not take because tomorrow is an orientation of the first term undergraduate. So uh, I'll be speaking uh, maybe day after tomorrow regarding these things. So these are also very important topics. So any questions from the class? These are very theoretical actually. Any questions, anyone? No, sir. Did you understand no, what I